Welcome to hour number two, the morning after live on Sports Grid and Sirius XM channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Friday on the morning after. To begin hour number two, we'll look at the postseason push in the W, the WNBA home stretch of this regular season. Most teams with four or five games remaining as we try to figure out the playoff position. But of course, one of the stars of the WNBA that has not played at all the entirety of this season is Brittany Griner. And after being arrested in Russia on February 17th for drug smuggling charges in cannabis possession, Brittany Griner was sentenced to nine years in Russian prison yesterday. She has been detained now for 169 days, and she pled guilty back on July 7th. She has been detained for nearly 170 days in Russia. And this is not a silver lining by any means, but this was expected. It's an incredibly harsh sentence, even by Russian legal standards, But this was expected. A Griner and her legal team aware of the implications of what this means. She needed to be sentenced before any diplomatic deal, a prisoner exchange, as we have got reports over the last couple of weeks, can come to terms. And the U.S. can continue to work to bring Brittany Griner and other Americans arrested abroad back home. So let's paint the timeline here after Brittany Griner's sentence of nine years in Russian prison yesterday again she has been detained for a hundred and seventy days and as we got word and reports within the last few weeks u.s officials have already offered a large deal as they put it for a prisoner exchange for Brittany griner and fellow american paul wallen who has been arrested since december of 2018 in russia as well so the u.s government has stated since may that griner has been wrongfully detained by russian authorities And the U.S. government is saying she has been wrongfully detained. That would be the letter of the law for Russian law as well. Anything less than six grams of cannabis possession is generally a fine worth up to 15 days in prison. Brittany Griner has been detained for already 169 days and was sentenced yesterday to nine years. But that actual sentence is not necessarily the length that she will still spend in Russian detainment. It's the amount of time the U.S. can diplomatically broker this deal for the prisoner exchange to bring Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan back to the United States. So a harsh sentence yesterday, an unfortunate situation for sure in Russia for Brittany Griner, but the start, as was expected, for the actual conversations of this prisoner exchange. She needed to be sentenced before anything could happen. And yesterday, before the Phoenix Mercury took on the Connecticut Sun, both teams held a 42-second moment of silence for Brittany Griner. 42, the number for the former Baylor basketball star and one of the stars in the WNBA. Let's get back to what happened on the hardwood yesterday, the postseason push in the W. The Sun win their second straight game, beating a shorthanded Phoenix Mercury team, 77-64 yesterday at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. The second straight win for the Sun, playing pretty good basketball now as we near the end of this regular season in the WNBA. This is the postseason push for sure. A welcome to our Sports Grid radio audience here. The second hour of the morning after, live on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. The Connecticut Sun beating the Phoenix Mercury yesterday, 77-64, covering as an 11 and a half point favorite the second straight victory for connecticut who has won now six of its last seven games and brendan glasheen who is the play-by-play voice of connecticut was on the show just a couple of weeks ago he said the big focus if you want to put down some wagers in the w you want to get ready for that postseason push is to know the forward position in the WNBA, and certainly that is the case for the sun the two joneses yesterday each have a huge night John Quell Jones, 14 points, 10 boards, a double-double for Connecticut. Brianna Jones adds 13 points and 9 rebounds off the bench. Connecticut now 22-10 and 10 straight up this year. They sit in a tie for second based on win percentage, only a game and a half back of the Chicago Sky, the reigning WNBA champs, as things stand right now in the final week or so of the WNBA regular season. The reason Connecticut 
is in a tie for a second is because something happened last night to the Las Vegas Aces that has been a rare occasion this season. The Aces dropped back-to-back games, losing on the road last night as an eight-and-a-half-point favorite against the Dallas Stars. Dallas winning outright as home as an eight-and-a-half-point favorite because of Tierra McCowan making a game-winning layup with just over 11 seconds left to clinch and seal that 82-80 victory. Now, the Aces came back in the fourth quarter, down seven points, under two and a half minutes left. They make it a game, tie it at 80, but McCowan, with a team-high 21 points for the Wings, hits the game winner with just over 11 seconds left. And again, Dallas winning outright as an eight-and-a-half-point underdog. I mentioned to lose two straight games for Las Vegas is a rare occurrence in the WNBA. It's the first time that has happened since early July in over a month. So a big, big win for the Wings last night, trying to solidify that sixth spot in the WNBA standings, which would be a postseason berth. Entering yesterday, the Sky were a slight, or the Aces rather, were a slight favorite from the WNBA championship over the Sky, plus 195 for Las Vegas, plus 200 for Chicago. It was MLB trade deadline week. We had our own fun with that and Benny and the Best. That's next. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rail. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full money. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And God and being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line even though it was an independent arbitrator that the NFL and the NFLPA said was going to be okay, we'll abide by this decision. But it comes down to Roger Goodell is the end-all, be-all on, you know, punishments here in the NFL. And he's going to strike that anvil. And quite frankly, he should. So the lose-lose situation is if you give Deshaun a 12-game suspension or a 17-game suspension, it's still a stain on the NFL. Only on SportsGrid. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Finally, Cooperstown and Major League Baseball have something specific and voluminous to celebrate. Seven worthy Hall of Fame members led by David Ortiz. Number 34 joins his Dominican friends, Guerrero, uh, Marichal, uh, others. The most important issue for him is not just he's the first DH to be elected on the first ballot of the Hall of Fame. And frankly, his last season, take a look at it, 127 RBIs and a uh, 38 homers, the biggest last season in history. Even more important than that, his civic mindedness, the rallying of Boston strong and all of the things that we took for granted. But here's the issue, steroids, no steroids, that took a backseat to doing good, philanthropic, absolute positivity. Baseball needs it now more than ever. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game.
The Major League Baseball trade deadline was Tuesday afternoon, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So it has come and passed. We know the rosters for the home stretch, the final two months or so of this Major League Baseball regular season. But we were inspired by trades, general managers calling one another, front offices, and deep discussions about swapping stars in MLB. So that was our focus for Benny and the Bets this week. Welcome back to the morning after live on this Friday right here on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens, the one known as Benny in the Bets, but our executive producer in the mornings, our field producer for Benny in the Bets, Alex Fasano, joins us now from Homedale, New Jersey at Bellworks HQ. Fasano, great to have you here on a Friday as always. Hey, Ben, it's great to be here on a football Friday. I'm sorry, Woo! Carrington. It is a football Friday. I may have to hit the beach later to toss the, uh, the old pigskin around. But hey, you know what? It's a football Friday to everybody here on the morning after. That's for sure. That's what I'm doing tomorrow as well. The beach in New Jersey. Hopefully the weather stays away. I'll be yassing that pigskin all across the place. Pretending I am Devontae Adams, who did not play last night in the Hall of Fame game. Running routes with my friends, throwing the football around. However, Fasano, our focus was that Major League Baseball trade deadline for Benny and the Bets. Try to broker some deals on the streets of New York City. Uh, you know, Ben, that's what we're all about there on Benny and the Bets, trying to find the newest topic, newest trade deadline acquisition. So we had a little fun there. We had a little bit of a, of a bartering system going on there on the streets mm. of New York City. You know what? I'm just going to stop talking about it, and let's just have everybody enjoy it. So why don't we sit back, take a deep breath on this football Friday, and enjoy this week's episode of Benny and the Bets. <laughs> With the Major League Baseball trade deadline this week, we wanted to do some trading of our own. So we hit the streets of New York City to see how much value a signed picture of me has. Would you trade me whatever is in your hand for this signed picture of me? Yes. Yeah? No. I, uh, I wish I could. Would you trade your lunch for this signed photo of me? No, I'm hungry. Sunglasses? No, those are mine in the photo. Would you give me the sunglasses on your head? No. What about, is there anything like in your purse that's cool? No. So nothing? Nothing. Um, nothing much, to be honest. What about the rest of that water bottle? <laughs> Would you trade it? Look at, look, how, look at that, I'll do it, I'll do the... Would you trade these drinks for this signed photo of me? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny, I thought it was a pretty good offer. Hell no. Hell no? No, no way. How come? I love food and you're nothing to me. I don't know, you should give me $50 for it. I should give you $50? Yeah, yeah. But it's signed of me, it's nice, look. Yeah, I know, but my signature, I could sign it too. I got two Domino's pizzas. Two Domino's pizzas, I'd only take one. Oh, really? Uh, this signed photo of me. Look. Well, who are you? My name is Benny and the Bets. Okay. I work for this wonderful company called Sports Grid. All right. You could be on TV later this week if you take this signed photo. No, I think I need more value than that. Um, two dollars and a kiss on the cheek. All right, do you have two dollars? No. What about a kiss on the cheek? Mm, not today. <laughs> my water? Really? All right, deal. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. I appreciate that. That's the first thing anybody's traded all day. What's your name? My name is Ben Stevens, Benny and the Bets. That's the camera. Okay. Now I'm going to be so hydrated. Thank you so much. Of course, no problem. Have a great day. Ho you. Hopefully that means something in a couple of years. Put up on my wall. Frame I'm it? Make it home in Canada. Wow. Yeah. We'll make it all the way to Canada. We'll make it all the way to Canada. So now we've traded the signed photo of me for an ice cold glass of water on this hot New York day. Let's see if we can trade it. What would you trade me for this nice cold glass of water? Nothing. It's very hot outside. What would you trade me for this glass of water? I have water already. So you don't need this water? No. What do you got? Yeah, okay. Clean paper towel. It's clean. <laughs> it's clean, yeah. You think it's a good deal? I think so. All right, I'll do it. Here you go. So we went from a signed photo to an ice cold glass of water. Now, a stack of napkins to keep people clean in this heat. If we can trade this, we're the best general manager of all time. The coffee I have. Yeah? You sure? Probably, because it's not that good. What would I trade you for? Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend, how about that? What would you trade me for this stack of napkins? Um, probably nothing, just a good high five. There you go. There's that, that's how, high five. What a great trade. So we went from a signed photo to an ice cold glass of water to napkins to keep everything clean. All parties ended up happy and that's what trading is all about. 
That's what trading is all about, Ben. I mean, <laughs> that was fantastic. Let me say, though, um, I think there is a way we can up your, tr your value on that signed picture. It might be if you hit your over on the game prop for the Sports Grid basketball game next Wednesday. I think that might be the best bet. Next Wednesday is our next game in our Sports Grid Rec League. As you saw a couple of weeks ago, we had a hype video out there and sports grid got its first win of the year 22 16 over jsg insurance everybody was making plays a win last week to follow it up a bye week this week and we're back in action in the playoff push as well fasano it's a big time to be a part of the grid <laughs> exactly i think we gotta get brian and the crew down there again film some more highlights pump it out a little more and the benny and the yep. bets name can be heard all across new york city and more but Ben, there's another aspect of this segment that everybody loves, and that's the producer pick. So let's get into it right here, right now, on a football Friday. That's why I'm starting you off, Ben, with the Titans' money line on a preseason game next Thursday. They're taking on the Ravens, and guys, I mean, they haven't lost, what, like 20 preseason games in Baltimore straight it's like they haven't lost since 2015 so I think they're due for a loss and this is the best plus money price you're gonna get it's preseason football guys I know but hey we're itching for it I'm ready for it give me the Titans money line against the Baltimore Ravens next week in the preseason a four and a half point spread in favor of Baltimore at home it is the largest spread right now available on FanDuel for every game week number one of the preseason. Two quick follow-up questions, Fasano. First being, is your Pittsburgh Steelers biases coming to a head here? And then second, are you optimistic about the Titans in the AFC South this year? Well, first I'll answer the Pittsburgh question because it does not factor in, Ben. It's just the preseason, okay. and obviously we know Baltimore's been so dominant over the years in preseason. Look where that got them really far in the postseason, guys. So that really doesn't factor in. But the Titans, I mean, hey, what were they, the one seed last year in the postseason? I think they're due for another bounce back. Well, not really a bounce back if they dominated last year, but I think they're going to be in the mix for sure. Don't sleep on my Steelers, though. Plus 330 to make the playoffs. Everybody's doubting them. We love to see it, Ben. I think uh, Titans are in a good spot. And now, as we look to postseason odds in the NFL, the postseason push in the WNBA, what does our producer Don Shames have for a play for us today? You know, John Shames is our hardwood guy. He loves the yeah. hoops, and he's going in the WNBA Mystics, uh, what is that, plus five and a half at minus 106. Yeah. I mean, that's two of the top teams in the WNBA right now in the Eastern Conference between the Sky and the Mystics. He loves his hoops. I think we got to tell Shames on this one. Give me the Mystics as the dog. The host of Betting Above the Rim each and every Saturday alongside our guy, James Young. That is what John Shames does. He loves the hardwood. John Shames loves the hardwood. Plus five and a half for the sticks. He said that the Chicago Sky were coming, uh, were losing a little bit of their luster as the top team in the league and the reigning WNBA champs. Chicago still won eight of the last 10 games, but we'll back John Shames here. Yeah, he probably spoke to JY about this pick. You know, JY and him are like yeah. this every single weekend. So maybe it's a little bit of a tandem pick. But nonetheless, let's get into our hottest guy on the producer picks board, and that's Jesse Metzger, our graphics producer. Jeff McNeil, two or more total bases at plus 150. Great game. Ian Anderson taking on uh, Ty Taiwan Walker for the Mets. Mets big win yesterday against the Braves. Hey, guys, Jesse knows his baseball. He knows his New York Mets. I'm tailing this plus money prop. A huge series for the Mets against the Braves this weekend. Right now, New York, a four-and-a-half game lead in the NL East. Alex Fasano, have a great weekend down the shore. Watch your speed on those highways. All right, we come back with more Major League Baseball up next here on the Morning app. The morning after. Paige Beckers, a star in all of college hoops for UConn women's hoops, suffering a torn ACL in a pickup game. The program announced yesterday, and she will miss the entirety of this up 
coming season. Suffering loss. Listen, going to the year, they had championship hopes after losing to South Carolina. I think South Carolina, with everybody back, is the clear favorite to repeat as the national champions. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The Bostonian versus the book. William Hill Caesars is 335. How is that that high? It was, and it was 330 this morning. Yeah, it's coming down. I did, did it reached the point. People had enough. I mean, the bad guy said, give me this. Colorado team like to yeah again to probably listen to the show hit the like <laughs> button if you come in and listen to the show and then go bet to Colorado please I mean seriously the Bostonian versus the book the early line you look at the the Soto statistics and that 246 batting average jumps off he has the third best on base percentage in all of baseball he was having a better year with the stick would be having a Barry Bonds level on base percentage right now. And that is going to, I really think, help Manny Machado get back into his group. Only on SportsGrid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action. From sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on sports. Back to the bigs, back to the diamond. To look at the Major League Baseball landscape as we round out this week and enter a weekend slate. Huge divisional matchups across the majors throughout this weekend. Welcome back to the morning after live right here on a Friday on Sports Grid. Now very pleased to welcome on one of the brightest young baseball minds covering the sport in my humble opinion. It is Arm Layton back on the show here on TMA, the founder of Just Baseball Media, the host of of the Just Baseball Show, alongside our good friend Jack McMullen as well. Aram, how was your Major League Baseball trade deadline week? It was stimulating. It was a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, the Juan Soto sweepstakes uh, kind of took precedent, but there were so many moves, so many teams got better, and, I mean, it was just a blast all around. Speaking of Juan Soto, his second game in a Padres uniform yesterday, game number one, was electric. The Padres scored six runs in the first inning, and Juan Soto got a walk in his first at-bat and scored the opening run of the game for the Padres. But yesterday, not so much fun in Southern California. The Rockies beat the Padres 7-3. to Joe Musgrove got shelled, but still, Arum, how would you sum up what Juan Soto means to this Padres lineup moving forward? Oh, my goodness. I mean, assuming that they get Tatis back, and I, I really do feel like Tatis making a big breakthrough in his recovery, being able to take some live BP, kind of pushed the Padres over the top and said, let's put together maybe the scariest trio uh, that we've seen in baseball in a while, which is Manny Machado, Juan Soto, and Fernando Tatis Jr., who seems to be at least on his way back. This is a lineup that you are just absolutely afraid of, and you add Josh Bell to that. There's really not one player 
that you can take an AB off if you're a pitcher facing this lineup. And we know that the pitching's pretty darn good as well, and they fortified the bullpen. But just on the Soto part of it, it's just another guy that's a tough out that can pick up the big hits and who has been there before. Uh, so this is the perfect player to add to the fold for the Padres. An incredibly tough out. Juan Soto's 91 walks at the dish this year lead all of the bigs. And yesterday, two for five at the plate for Juan Soto. A double and a triple. And let's not forget Brandon Drury, who was traded from the Reds, who was having a career year. And on the first pitch he saw in a Padres uniform two nights ago, joined Slam Diego, a grand slam. I said the Padres scored six runs in the opening frame. It was only five, but I'm caught up in the excitement as well. So, Arm, a huge weekend series for the Padres, just a little bit north of San Diego in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Now, San Diego is 12 and a half back of L.A., who just swept the Giants. The Dodgers have won five straight games and have a 12 and a half game lead in that National League West. But this series feels like there will be a playoff atmosphere in L.A. What are you most anticipating for the weekend set between the Padres and the Dodgers? You know, I think everyone's going to be firing their best bullets here because this is an opportunity to to really kind of gauge where you're at. Obviously, it's going to be incredibly difficult to catch the Dodgers if you're the Padres, but also the Padres are trying to make sure that they can solidify themselves as that wild card team, and I think we're, we feel like they probably will. I'm just excited to see how these teams stack up against each other. I'm excited for the intensity. You know it's going to be a packed house to see these two teams play, who are now two of the most exciting teams in baseball. And while the Dodgers didn't have the loudest deadline ever, they've had some internal guys get promoted, some prospects I really like, James Outman, Miguel Vargas, to name a few, and they're starting to look good out of the gate. The Dodgers are always getting better, and I think this is going to be a really good opportunity to kind of see how these two teams stack up against each other. And healthier on the mound for sure for L.A. Walker Buehler due back very soon. And Dustin May, the fiery redhead, should be back for Los Angeles if he is not already very, very soon for the home stretch. Just under two months left in this Major League Baseball regular season. The Dodgers, by the way, now 72-33 and straight up. That's the best record overtaking the Yankees in Major League Baseball at this point. So, Arm, you mentioned where the Padres are. 12 and a half back of the Dodgers in the division, but firmly holding on to that second wild card spot in the National League. The Braves own the top spot right now, and there's a three-way tie for that third and final NL wild card spot between the Phillies, the Cardinals, and the Brewers because St. Louis and Milwaukee also tied for the top spot in the National League Central. Arm, how do you think, as you peer into your crystal ball, the wild card race in the National League will play out over the rest of this regular season? Man, I, I, was, I was hoping one of those teams would be a bit more aggressive. The Phillies made some good moves to shore up some of their holes, right? Getting a Brandon Marsh, who doesn't offer a, a lot with the stick right now, but plays great defense, and they really needed that. Also get David Robertson, a reliever, that's going to help them as well. Uh, and Noah Syndergaard, who isn't what he once was, but can eat some important innings for you. I still think the Cardinals' star power is, is really going to put them over the top. And they made some underrated additions, too. Harrison Bader wasn't going to be available for another month or so. They swap him for Jordan Montgomery, and Montgomery helps fortify that rotation big time. They also get Jose Quintana. So I feel a lot better about their pitching situation. It's still not the sexiest in the world, but if they can get Flaherty back at some point, that's house money as well. Their bullpen has been pretty solid. I think the Cardinals, led by Goldschmidt, Arenado, and everybody that's starting yep. to get hot on their lineup right now is going to put them over the top, and I think that's the team to beat right now. The Redbirds have won four straight games. The Brewers have lost four straight. That's why there's a tie at the top of the National League Central. All right, final question about the National League and the Padres, I promise, before we go elsewhere in Major League Baseball. Aram, the Padres moved up in the market following the Juan Soto deal, as was to be expected. Plus 850 yeah. to win the National League pennant, the fourth best odds at the time. Now, the third best price at plus 490. Is the expectation for this year in San Diego, now NL pennant or bust? I think it's got to be, right? Anytime you give up the largest trade package that we've ever seen, really, uh, you, you've got to feel pretty good about what you're doing right now. And they locked up Joe Musgrove, who I know looked shaky in his last start, but that guy is, is a fortified top 15 starter in the game right now. Yeah. Uh, they've got the pitching. They've went out and got the best closer over the last five years. I know he's faltered a little bit in Josh Hader. They've made all the moves they need to make that scream 
we want to win right now. And just because the Dodgers are at the top of the division, that doesn't mean the Padres don't feel like they can really make a run at this. I do think it's pennant or bust for the Padres, and uh, that's what makes it really exciting out of the NL West. Again, the third best number, and their number to win the World Series was 20 to 1 before the trade deadline, following the acquisition of Juan Soto, 10 to 1. Cut that price exactly in half. All right, over to the American League. Well, Arm, it still feels like it's a two team race for that American League pennant. The Yankees out of the AL East, the Astros out of the AL West. The Yanks are plus 130 as the favorites to win the AL pennant. The Astros only 55 cents behind at plus 185. And then you see there in this wonderful graphic to display the postseason picture at the moment, the drop off in those numbers. In your mind, Arm, where we are right now in early August, is it still a two team race to win the AL? You know, I I think it's one of those situations where it's baseball. And if you can always sprinkle on another team, I think there's always a shot, right? And I I look at the Mariners and what they've been able to do. And there's definitely some value there. You go get Luis Castillo and you get healthy internally as well. Kyle Lewis is back. You also are ready to get Mitch Haniger back. That's going to be a huge, huge boost for the offense. And now they're hoping that Jared Kalnick could even be able to contribute. We know the rest of the team is really solid. They've made a lot of good moves that I like, but... I think the Astros are the most complete team in the AL, and the fact that they're not the favorite is, is is pretty surprising to me, especially after the moves that they made. I know the Yankees got Montes, but look at what Garrett Cole is doing recently. I mean, look how rough he has looked. If it goes to a Game 7, who do you trust more, Justin Verlander or Garrett Cole? I trust Justin Verlander, and the Astros also – fortified the catching position they go get christian vasquez who's been phenomenal behind the dish they go get trey mancini try to poke a hole in the astros right now i don't think you can i know the yankees are a very very good team and we're splitting hairs here but i have a little bit more concern not to mention jordan montgomery i like him as an arm and now you send him out a little bit more reliance on the domingo hermans of the world anester cortez who's going to be on an innings limit presumably the astros seem like they have less question marks and oh by the way They might be getting Lance McCullers back before the season's over. That's a nice little boost as well. The Astros an 11 and a half game lead in the American League West. They're a minus 20,000 favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook (laughs) currently. The Yankees a 10 and a half game advantage over the Blue Jays. They're a minus 7,000 divisional favorite in the American League East. Those Blue Jays who have the third best price in the AL pennant market at plus 700. Knocking off the Twins in Minnesota yesterday. Nine to three the final, but are one of the more fascinating divisions in baseball to watch in the final couple of months of the Major League Baseball regular season will be the American League Central. The Twins, the Guardians, and the White Sox all battling for that top spot. All three teams losing yesterday. In Minnesota at the moment, a one-game lead over Cleveland, a two-game lead over Chicago. Who wins this division, Arm Layton? I'm asking you to peer into the crystal ball a bunch today. So similar to the way that we've seen the Brewers kind of fade after Josh Hader was dealt. And I, we, we saw Devin Williams' reaction there uh, and how the clubhouse felt about that. Teams are galvanized by adding at the deadline as well and vice versa. You have two teams here, the White Sox and the Guardians, who did nothing at the deadline. And the team can feel that. The Twins did a lot. They go get Tyler Malley. They go make some other moves as well that I really like for their ball club get some relievers, get Fulmer. Uh, they made enough moves where I think you got to feel a lot better about their situation. And Buxton's healthy. Correa's starting to heat up. Jose Miranda is on another planet right now. The Twins are the far and away favorite for me. I know that betting-wise, that's not the case. So you can kind of read between the lines there. I think the Twins are going to run away with it down the stretch. They can see it. They can taste the blood in the water. And the White Sox and Guardians did nothing at the deadline. Just a 10 cent advantage in the odds, plus 135 for Minnesota, plus 145 for Chicago. But I know our next guest, Arnim, Jim Saunas, will be very happy to hear your prediction that Minnesota will run away with the American League Central. Arm Layton, the founder of Just Baseball Media. Thank you so much for your time. More of the morning after up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Saban's leadership ability and how the rest of us can learn from the greatest college football coach of all time. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love people tell me about in the book, you know, somebody described him, it's almost like he is a thoroughbred horse with blinders on. And so whatever he's <laughs> doing, he is locked into. He's not thinking about what other stuff he should be doing later on that night. He's doing what he needs to do. And I think that's really important. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Is there any reason to believe that Mariota will start at all for any fantasy team this season? So he is drafted on a Superflex, but you're talking once again. He's outside your top 22, 24, so he's that reserve guy. Or well, if you want to take a shot, you know, late on, oh, maybe he becomes something. As I said, I think Ritter's going to play at some point. Most of us, uh, you know, ask anybody, they believe Falcons are going to be a bad team. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Inflation. It hits cars. It hits gas. It hits food. It hits all consumer expenditures. Why not sports? ESPN did a poll among all of the leading concessionaires, Aramark, Levy, Delaware North, and others, to see how it actually impacts baseball and other concession sales. Well, since 2021 to date, hot dog prices food, nachos, beer, up an average of 20%. The most expensive hot dog, eight bucks, 33 cents for the Mariners. They're winning, so it may not matter. And hot dog prices continue to go up, not as much as gas prices, but something that is very important. So when we go to ball games and we look at ticket prices and parking, concessions becomes very, very important as well. We may see fan attendance decreasing, even if the revenue may go up slightly. We'll have to see as the summer plays out. Get you ready for the weekend in Major League Baseball. That's what we do here live on a Friday on the morning after on Sports Grid. A huge weekend across the bigs following the Major League Baseball trade deadline. And it's the Jim Sonnets Sandlot Slate. I have to take my time with that tongue twister here on TMA. Joining us from FanDuel and Number Fire, it is Jim Sonnets. Jim, how was your Major League Baseball trade deadline week? Did it live up to your wildest hopes and dreams? I mean, you were just talking about the Twins and the AL Central odds. I grew up a Twins fan. I'm from Minnesota, so I was pretty happy with it. Like, when they were talking, there was a lot of, like, buzz. They were going to get a starter. I was like, oh, we bring in Carlos Rodon back to the Midwest. We're going to make this happen. We're going to get this party started. And didn't quite get that fun, but, hey, I mean, Tyler Malley's cool. We get a... We get him versus Jose Barrios in revenge game tonight, so that's kind of fun, but um, nice. it was pretty good. I will take what happened for sure. As long as Buxton is healthy, we can keep that knee good. That's the biggest trade I care about. So um, whatever trade we got to make with the devil to keep him healthy, I will do because everything else is going pretty well right now. The Twins right now, the favorites barely in the AL Central in the FanDuel Sportsbook, plus 135, 10 cents in front of the White Sox, but Minnesota, a one-game lead over Cleveland and a two-game advantage over Chicago at this moment. But of course, the biggest story around the Major League Baseball trade deadline, the Juan Soto sweepstakes, sending the generational superstar talent from Washington to San Diego. And the Padres have a huge weekend set just up a little bit in Southern California in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. And Jim, right now, LA has won five straight games. LA is 72-33, and 33, the best record currently in Major League Baseball. 
What are you looking forward to the most in this matchup between Los Angeles and San Diego? Yeah, I think it's the pitching because the offense for San Diego is looking pretty good right now. And I think that's kind of solidified, secured, and good to go. But honestly, the pitching is shakier than it was earlier on this year. And part of that is tonight's starter, Sean Manaya. It seems like he's in a bit of a funk right now. He struggled against Detroit, which is always kind of a red flag. But uh, he's had his slider velocity up for his past 10 starts. And typically, that's a good thing. But in that sample, Manaya has a 4.36 or uh, 4.36 skill interactive ERA. Strikeout rate is down to 22%. 10 starts is a pretty big sample for a pitcher. So a little bit concerning, especially because if you look at the San Diego team, that could be one of the areas you could turn to. You Darvish is pitching well right now. Musgrove struggled last night, but generally doing well. The offense, I have no concerns about right now, but the pitching staff a little bit concerning if Manai is going to fall off. So I want to see what he does tonight. I know it's a tough matchup, but I think that could go a long way towards determining how we view this Padres off or this Padres team in the postseason when pitching does matter quite a bit. I think that's kind of, it's gone from being their biggest strength to their biggest question mark, not a weakness, but a question mark. I think that that this weekend could go a long way towards answering how we should view them going forward. Jim, you are a pro's pro. How we view San Diego moving forward. How do we evaluate the Padres now following the Juan Soto deal? Because their odds got a lot better to win the National League pennant, plus 850 prior to the trade, plus 490 now. But how do we evaluate the San Diego team? 12 and a half back of the Dodgers in the National League West. And you saw there LA a minus 7,000 favorite. <laughs> to win the division. But as we look at postseason baseball here, Jim, do you put the Padres on the same peg as the Los Angeles Dodgers? Not yet. A lot of it is, I think, again, the pitching questions we discussed. I think Los Angeles, despite the Kershaw injury yesterday, does have a couple fewer question marks there. I still like their offense more than I like the Padres, despite the addition. So the Dodgers are a tier above, but also I think Having the Mets up there makes a lot of sense with the pieces they've got. The Braves are kind of feisty once again, too. So I think at plus 490, you're kind of buying at the wrong time. And I think that to me, you missed your chance to buy in on this Padres offense. With where they're at right now, they're a pretty clear stay away from me. They're not an active fade by any means because I don't want to root against Juan Soto, Manny Machado, etc. But like they're they're an active avoid for me at their current numbers because there are still some obstacles there. The Met obstacles being obviously the Dodgers, uh, being the Mets, that their path is a lot tougher than other National right. League teams too. And I think that is accounted for in the numbers, but it's a really tough league. And I think that that's enough where I think the Padres for me are a stay away at their current numbers. The Dodgers plus 165 as the favorites to win the National League pennant. They take on the Padres who have the third best odds. The Mets have the second best price at plus 290. They take on the Braves this weekend as well and Atlanta still the fourth best price in the National League at plus 550. The Mets with a win yesterday over the Braves now hold a four and a half game lead over Atlanta. What can we expect on this Friday night between the Amazons and the Braves? Yeah, I like the Mets again. I think that they were a fun bet last night. They're fun once again for today. A lot of it is Taiwan Walker is pitching a lot better now than he was earlier on this year. A big part of that is strikeouts. Walker's strikeout rate is up to 24% across his past 10 starts. We've been using more sliders, and that's a pretty good number. 3.53 skill interactive ERA for Walker in that time. So this number has moved. The money line for the Mets this morning was minus 138. It's now minus 140, but I still think there is a bit of value in them at that number. The implied odds at a minus 148 are 59.7%. I've got them at 61% to win this game. So not a big edge, but it's an edge that I actually do buy into based on what Walker's done. Ian Anderson's, I think, potentially a bit underrated right now because he's been with the Odorizzi acquisition, some talk about his rotation spot. And he might be a bit underrated, but I think Walker is pretty solid. So I think the Mets money line is still a good place to go. Minus 148, still a bit of value there. If it gets any shorter, I think that's a good time to jump off and uh, stay away. But for right now, still some value there. And if you can get shorter than, uh, or uh, if you can get a number better than minus 148, definitely in on the Mets at that number because of everything working in their favor right now. The Mets, 6-1 to one, to win the World Series, the fourth best price. The Yankees are the favorites at plus 330. The Dodgers, the second best odds, and the Astros round out the top three. But four of the six best prices, Jim, in the World Series market following the Major League Baseball trade deadline 
hail from the National League. So I'll ask you this question about the World Series odds. Where is the value? Is it on those teams from the American League or is it on the teams from the NL? I think it's specifically on the Yankees, honestly. I know that their odds are very, very short, but they probably should be very, very short. I think that they are the best team in baseball, despite the fact you've seen some regression from Nestor Cortez, the pitching staff. I'm not sure if it's like wearing down, but like they've slipped a bit, but that bullpen is still good. That offense is absurd. So if I'm looking for value, I think part of the reason why you see shorter odds for a lot of the National League teams is because... They got to go through the Met or the Yankees. They got to go through the Astros to get there. And I'm having a hard time seeing that. So to me, if I'm looking for value in the World Series markets right now, I actually do think it's on the Yankees at plus 330, which is weird. Like they're a very public team. Right. People love the Yankees. So typically you're not going to see value there. But I actually think there might be based on what my power ranking say about them, based on what the eye test says. I think they're really freaking good and potentially even better than what the market is saying. I mean, it's a great point, Jim, because oftentimes people think of value as, all right, let's go take the 20 to 1 long shot. But that might be value, and they, those odds are long because it is a long opportunity, unlikely, for that team to actually win. And when you have three teams all within $1 of each other, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Astros, there is value available. The Yankees on the road tonight under the arch in St. Louis, Nasty Nestor gets the start for the pinstripes, always booked as a favorite, it feels. Minus 154 as the road favorites with the two odds-on favorites to win their league's MVP facing off. Aaron Judge for the Yankees, Paul Goldschmidt for the Cardinals. Where is the value tonight, Jim, in this matchup between the Redbirds and the pinstripes? Yeah, so we were just talking about the Yankees, gushing about them. Um, if I made any anti-Yankees fans uh, displeased, we can try to win them back here because I'm actually going against the Yankees for tonight specifically. The Cardinals are plus 130 to win this game, and they are a team that torches lefties. Their current active roster has a 146, 146 WRC plus against lefties Holy facing Nestor Cortez tonight. And, and as I mentioned, hasn't quite been the same guy he was earlier on this year. The strikeout rate is declining, letting up a lot of fly balls and against Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, Tyler O'Neill is back and hitting the ball well. Dylan Carlson's been pretty good too. That's a tough lineup to face as a lefty. So not only do I like the Cardinals plus 130, but also I like Cortez under his strikeout prop. It is at five and a half right now. The under is down to minus 146. It was better than that earlier on. Uh, it was minus 136 this morning. So it has moved. I would bet this to minus 150, so we're getting pretty close to where I would uh, stay away from that one. But I think given the declining pitch count we've seen from Cortez, seems like they're trying to rest him up and keep him uh, fresh for October, which they should. It's a smart thing to do. I think that that declining strikeout rate, that declining pitch count, combined with a super, super tough matchup on the road, that's enough where I do like the under on Cortez, uh, under uh, five and a half, minus 146. And I do like that Cardinals money line, plus 130, it's not going to concern me for the Yankees long term in terms of their their World Series, but for night, tonight specifically, I love this offense. I think they could do well versus Cortez. A 1.46 WRC plus against lefties. Jim, what's the major league average? Like 1.00? That's a yeah. pretty ridiculous stat for St. Louis. Again, the home underdogs tonight at plus 130. Quickly here, Jim, Paul Goldschmidt, the odds-on favorite to win the National League MVP, minus 135. Of course, he plays for St. Louis, but Austin Riley of the Braves is making up some ground. It doesn't seem like that will be the case in the American League MVP market. Aaron Judge is minus 420 to win this award, given his tear since returning from the All-Star break. At this point, in early August, Jim Saunas, has Aaron Judge locked up the American League MVP? Probably, but also like, I don't know. It's it's weird because like when we're betting this stuff, we're not betting based on what we do. Because if I were betting, I'd give it, or if I were voting, I'd give it to Shohei Otani every year as long as he has like functioning limbs because he's just such a valuable player. So like I'd vote for Otani, but also you get the voter fatigue. You get the fact that it is a team that is phenomenal this year. Aaron Judge is obviously the key driving piece in there being so good. And Aaron Judge is also awesome. This is not a, not a shot at him. I'd vote for Otani. So I think to me, although I would vote Otani, and I think Otani deserves this award, I can't get to him at plus 350, knowing the way that voters are going to view this, knowing the way right. they break things down. I just think it's tough to get there. So I'd vote for Otani. I think that he deserves it. Again, if he 
if he's walking this earth, he probably deserves the MVP award. But I just can't bet him right now, plus 350, because I think there's a lot of steam on Judge. It's a team that's doing well. It's a, a very high-profile team. I think there are enough factors working against Otani where I can't bet him, despite the fact I think he is the deserving MVP this year. Shohei Otani hit two solo home runs yesterday for the Angels. Los Angeles hit seven solo home runs in total in the game, and they lost to the Oakland Athletics 8-7. to seven. It is the Shohei Otani meme in real life. Just pay attention to that. A Major League Baseball historic feat yesterday in a bad way for the Angels. All right, Jim, we started with an American League Central conversation. That's how we'll end. Two games today. The Twins on the money line in Framber Valdez against the Cleveland Guardians, who Minnesota holds a one-game lead over in the divisional standings right now. What are the plays here? Yeah, I like the Twins' money line plus one away against their old friend, Jose Barrios, just because I think this is a pretty solid team. Buxton seems like he's healthier now. It seems like he's playing, had his knee drained once again. So expecting him to play, so I do like that at plus 108. As far as Valdez, I like over four and a half, minus 138. He's a, He's been getting more strikeouts recently, been lowering his, his change of usage. I think that bodes well. So tough matchup for Valdez, but really good pitcher, goes deep in games. I think that can get him there. A good number, and Jim, you have inspired me. We'll end out the show with an American League Central best bet as well. Jim Saunas from Number Fire and FanDuel. Have a great weekend. You as well. Thank you. An American League Central best bet, but fading the team from the American League West. We'll talk about it next. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on SportsGrid. morning after as it pertains to this number for 30 and a half for an over under we have seen five unders in four over not the strongest trend or edge either which way but the last two games have gone under this number of 30 and a half last year the Steelers beat the Cowboys 16 to 3 we take the under out of principle tonight to start off a new year in football the sports grid network Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com.
We close out our two hours together, our week together here on the morning after on Sports Grid in just a couple of moments. Thank you for joining us here on what has been a football Friday on TMA with a ton of focus on Major League Baseball to end out this second hour as well. I feel like we need football. We had football last night. We won't have any more until the preseason week number one gets underway next week, but at least we can rejoice in the fact that starting yesterday, we'll have a football game, either the NFL or college, each and every week until after the Super Bowl in mid-February. But until we get fully into football, we send, your in, we send you into your weekend with Major League Baseball. It's a huge weekend in the bigs. Huge matchups between the Padres and the Dodgers, the Mets and the Braves. And then we have to decipher what's going to happen in the American League Central. It will be the most interesting division in Major League Baseball, in my estimation, to end out this year. So before we say farewell, before we say goodbye, it's time for a Major League Baseball best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. The Chicago White Sox on the road today against the Texas Rangers. And Dylan Cease is on the bump for the White Sox. They're a minus 196 money line road favorite right now and it makes sense because despite the fact chicago trails the twins by two games in the american league central and currently occupies that third spot dylan cease has been absolutely incredible in his last 12 starts in fact in his last 12 starts dylan cease has allowed only one earned run or less in his most recent 11 starts dylan cease has allowed three earned runs in total So look at the Rangers team total today. It's at three. We stay under that number, hoping Dylan Cease has another strong outing and the bullpen for the Southsiders can finish the deal. Rangers under three and keep an eye on Dylan Cease's odds to win AL Cy Young plus 460 now. The morning after each and every weekday, it starts at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I'm Ben Stevens. Have a great weekend and we'll talk on Monday.